tutorial uh, showing you how to paint the, the Vax figure from Steam Forge Games. Uh, this is, well, I hope anybody can find this uh, useful. This is going to be especially geared towards uh, novice painters, beginner painters, um, and really try and cover um, the whole process in detail. Uh, most of this is, is a writ tutorial, which is likely where you found the link to this video. Um, however, I'm going to be doing a little bit of parts of this uh, in, in, on video, obviously. Um, and today I'm going to talk about doing the, uh, the face, painting the face, and trying to show you that process uh, through here. So this is just the, uh, the first part, which will be primarily uh, discussion, kind of going over the basics of, of, of how I approach this. Um, and then I'm going to lay down the, the basic shadows, um, lights and darks for the face. Um, and then in the following parts, I will clean that up and get the more refined, uh, refined face. So the game with us is cover some basics. Uh, I'm working with acrylic paint. Um, I'm a big fan of the Reaper Master Series paints. Uh, any acrylic paint, any acrylic model paint should work fine for you. Um, but I like this brand because they have um, a nice variety of skin tones. Um, this is a, a rosy, rosy skin, and then corresponding rosy shadow. Rose this is a rosy highlight. Um, you got fair skin, fair skin shadow, fair skin highlight. Um, bronze skin, olive skin, dark skin. Uh, it goes on and on. We've got a lot of different skin tones to work with, so it gives us a nice flexibility. Um, while each of the skin sets comes in a mid-tone shadow highlight, um, I prefer to mix and match. So the, the mix I'm using for this figure um, uses the, the rosy shadow and then the fair skin and the fair skin highlight as kind of my, my main colors. And then for darker shadows, um, I'm going to work in some reddish browns. Uh, that's going to be primarily this chestnut brown and then mahogany brown for the really dark spots. And then for the top highlights, um, I've got this linen white, um, just slightly off white, a little bit more on the, uh, the yellow side. Um, but again, any, any skin tones, any set, whether you're using uh, GW, P3, Vallejo, um, you know, any of those uh, typical model paints, you're going to have skin tones there. Um, and the same general idea of adding some reddish browns, maybe some darker shadows, some off-white and ivory, or a similar color uh, for those top highlights. You, know, you can get by with any of, these, any of those paint sets. Um, I'm also working with what we call a wet palette. Um, I've sort of made my own, uh, just some Tupperware, um, and then inside you've got a sponge, which is your reservoir. Uh, it stays wet. Uh, adds the water to your paint, um, and then there's just a sheet of palette paper on top of that. Uh, I'm using uh, Stay Wet, uh, Masterson Stay Wet, uh, S-T-A-W-E-T, uh, their palette paper and their sponge, but you can you can even make your own just using a, a paper towel soaked in water and some uh, parchment paper, uh, just stuff you have by having your kitchen, uh, and, and make your own wet palette. Uh, I just have to, to like this paper a little bit better. So. I'll be working with that. And then brushes. Uh, the, the best brushes that you can find are Kalinsky Sable brushes. They're going to hold the point the best. Um, Windsor Newton has a, 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 a gray there. Series 7 uh, is a, a very nice uh, nice brush. Uh, very good. Uh, I think other brushes, there's a uh, Raphael, although some of their, I, I, I think their quality has come off a little bit, uh, but you can get the, the Raphael 8404, um, and that's another, uh, another good brush to use. Um, I'm working with, uh, Sharf, which is a company based in the U.S., and this is their Series 3000 line, uh, but all of these are Kolinsky Sable brushes, and they're going to give you the, uh, the best point, so certainly for your, your detail work, um, that's the preferred brush to use, uh, one of those Clint and Sable brushes. Um, obviously for base coat you can use a bit of an older brush or, or not quite as nice a brush. Um, but that'll give you your, your crispest detail. All right, so um, what I've, at this point, the figure is assembled. Uh, it's easier to see since it's black and the background's a little black. Um, so the figure's been assembled and base coated. 
Uh, most of the figure is done in black, and then I've base coated the skin using that uh, rosy shadow uh, shadow paint. Um, and this is just, it's going to be easier uh, to, to do the phaser duty section when you have the neighboring areas at least base coated. Um, so when I, uh, you know, when I come to paint the, the hood or the hair, um, I don't have to worry about going right up to the skin because I've already done that. And that's a, you know, a time when you're going to possibly you know, get a little bit of that color onto the skin or vice versa. Um, so kind of already having that base coat in is going to save you most of that. Also, there's also some touch-ups after I do the skin. I'm sure I'll get some skin on the hair. And I'll just go in there and, and touch that up. But it's only going to be a tiny little bit. You know, the more of that that I have to do, the more likely I am to goof up and get a bit of that black onto the face. And then I've got to repaint that part of the face. So it's mostly, uh, not, not entirely, but, but the, the large part of that is just to uh, prevent errors uh, in the future. All right. Um, so with the face base coated, uh, what I'm going to want to do is start laying down those shadows. And I like to sketch on my shadows and then blend them in from there. Uh, now for shading, uh, the introductory approaches are to use uh, washes to shade and dry brushing to highlight. Washes are, are very watered down paint. The idea is that you they wash over the face, they'll kind of flow all over, and they'll collect in the recesses and give you darker shades in those recesses and not in the, uh, the, the other areas. And then you use dry brushing, which is putting some paint on your brush, but very, very little, and then just sort of dragging the brush across the face, and that paint then just gets on those raised sections. Um, and that's a great way to do it in your videos. It's a great way to start. It's like most people start painting. Um, but you're, you're shading based on recesses are dark, raised sections are lighter. And that's not really how light works. Um, so I'm going to be using a technique called layering which is adding um, layers of paint going from darker to lighter. Um, and I'm going to be having, you know, by layering, I control where those are. I'm going to control the placement of those and get more realistic placement of lights and shadows. Um, when you are shading the figure, uh, the tutorials you often might see something called zenithal highlight, zenithal lighting. Um, the idea being that you imagine there's a light source above the and actually not just a single point light, but more like a halo of light shining down onto the figure. So, you know, kind of no matter what angle you look at from the front, the side, uh, the back, it's like the light was above it, but slightly between you and the figure. So it's a little bit more of, of the light coming down at an angle rather than just directly from above. Um, and basically you're going to shade the, the top regions. So if you think of a, of a sphere, um, or I'll do is the, the cylinder here. If the light source is above it, the light source is up here, um, the lightest highlights are going to be right on top, the darkest shadows are going to be right beneath it. And then as you go from here towards the side, you get to your mid-tone, and then you get darker and darker and darker until you're deep in shadow. And that essentially mimics a, a diffuse light source um, above the object. Uh, we don't really do cast shadows, so I know we're, we're going darker underneath here, but it's not just a... a straight cut off here. Um, we're also mimicking that there's some bounce lighting and other lights hitting from below. So you're going to get progressively darker as you go down under uh, the, that circle, that sphere. Um, and so from the standpoint of the face, typically you're going to think of it the light coming, the, the forehead's going to get hit by light, the bridge of the nose, top of the cheeks, top of the chin, and then going down under the cheeks, you're going to get darker there, under the brows, around the eyes, you'll be dark. And then certainly under the chin is going to be uh, darkest uh, still. Now I've done this with the mother figures, and I'll just bring up a few examples to, to, uh, to show you. These are various scales, but the approach is the same. So here is, uh, this is a bust, so quite a bit larger. But you can see the general idea of the scene at the lighting. I've painted dark underneath the brows, which means more in shadow. Uh, under the jaw, it's dark, uh, getting a bit darker into the, the cheeks, but not quite as much. And then obviously the main highlights are on the bridge of the nose, top of the cheeks, and on that brow. Uh, another figure I'm working on at the moment is a 75 millimeter uh, Molly Mock. And, uh, you know, same general idea. You can see the face, uh, you know, the highlight and shadow placement. 
it, it's exaggerated, but it looks better on that, that small scale. You can see the lights going on top of the, the head, uh, right above the eyes, the nose, top of the cheeks, and then you also get it on the chin, and then going down into shadow around the side of the face, and then obviously under, under the jaw. And for a figure maybe a little more intermediate in size, this is a 54 millimeter figure. Um, but again, I get the same general idea of you know, where you're placing those lights and shadows gives you more realistic effect. And we'll get near the end. So that the first part is, is mainly just trying to understand lights and shadows and place those correctly on the figure. Uh, another part of doing realistic skin is getting that color variation. And you can see a bit of it on this figure here. Um, try and just refocus. There we go. Uh, so in addition to the basic skin tone, um, I've got some color variation on the, the, the lower part of the face where you might get a, a bit of stubble. Uh, it's not real extreme here, but there's a bit of color shift you can see there. And then I'm adding, uh, you got some more reds uh, in the cheeks, a little bit of red on the tip of the nose. Um, and we're going to be doing that at the very end using the lasers. So we're going to be applying that, doing that same thing on Vax um, and adding that skin tone variation. It's, it's not real hard. Um, glazing is, is a more advanced technique, but it is not, um, once you understand the basics of how it works, it's not that difficult. Um, and it will give you much more realistic looking skin tones. Even uh, one piece that maybe haven't you know, been shaded perfectly, the blending's not perfect, uh, it still helps step that up a little. So that's something that we'll be looking at and uh, I'll be demonstrating to you in the, uh, the later parts of this tutorial. But for now, uh, we just need to begin with uh, Vax. So what I want to do is sketch on my, my shadows. And so again, I'm placing those based on that zenith and lighting. So uh, I need to mix some paint. So we've got my wet palette here. We begin with that base coat, that base layer, which is rosy shadow. Um, I like Reaper because they have rubber bottles. Uh, I mean, you know, with the GW or P3, you've got paint pots. So putting the paint on the palette is a little, a little more inconvenient. Um, but so I just give the bottle a little shake, and then we will put a bit of the paint. I don't need a whole lot. Um, just a bit of the paint onto that palette, and then I'm going to grab my shadow color, which is a reddish brown. In this case, chestnut brown. But again, any reddish brown will work. Um, other color we use for shadows would be like a dark red. Um, I personally think the reddish brown looks a little bit better because the red, you know, you're, is it blood, is it a shadow? Um, so that's why I kind of prefer to go with more brown, make it a little bit clearer. And then uh, I'm going to take some of my skin tone and mix that into my brown. Uh, you can use the tip end of a brush, but I like the toothpick. Um, just gives you a little bit more control and not worry about messing up the paint. So, you know, I'm putting maybe 10%. Um, skin tone into that uh, that brown, just to give it a little more, uh, a little more of a skin feeling. And then I want this to be. Um, you generally want to thin your paint. So the wet palette is going to add some water, just based on the uh, the sponge. It's just going to put a bit more water in the paint. Um, I'll often just dip my toothpick into my water cup. I've got a bit of water there on the end that I can just add to that paint and just help thin it out. Um, and you can kind of see here that paint is not super thick. Uh, you can see that the color is, you know, when I actually spread it out, it's not nearly as thick as the, uh, the, the puddle would uh, lead you to believe. And this is just going to give you a smoother application. Uh, you may have to put multiple layers to build that color up. Um, but especially on a small figure like this, you don't want the paint to be too thick or you're going to glob it all over. And it's going to clog up uh, details. And typically, as I'm dipping my brush in the paint, um, I'll typically go from the edge and kind of feather it out a bit. Um, we're supposed to get some brush on the paint without being too much. Um, you can see that the, you know, there's brush on the paint, but it's not just, you know, go here, I'm globbing it on a lot. So this just gives me a little bit more control uh, over the, uh, the paint on the brush. All right, so uh, let's grab our figure, take some paint, and I'm going to start with the 
most extreme shadow is going to be under the jaw. Um, and again, you know, my, my goal here is just to create a sketch. I'm not worried about blending. I'm not worried about everything being the, the, the smoothest application. Um, I don't want to glob paint on, obviously, but I'm not worried about, you know, if I get a little bit, which I don't necessarily want it. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and fix it later. So, let me just reposition this a little better view for you, I hope. Sorry if I said it was not the most advanced, but it does the job. So you can see I've just painted underneath the jaw. There's that, that first shadow. Um, while I'm down here, I'm going to get into the neck. Um, and if there's little spots where the base coat missed um, in between the neck and that, that boundary region, I kind of just use that shadow to uh, find that edge. Next, I'm going to get around the eyes, uh, and here my, my normal process is to rough in the shadows around the eyes, and then I'll paint in the details of the eyes, the eyes themselves. Um, maybe they could be a bit coarser with the shadow and not worry about messing up uh, the eyes, uh, what I've already done if I've, I've painted on those details. Uh, otherwise, I need to be very, very careful about under the nose. Let me get the other eye. He's got a bit of a raised brow there. Um, and again, this is getting down onto the eye itself, but that's okay because I'll be painting those those eyes afterwards, and I'll cover up uh, cover up that uh, just to find that mouth. thin line in there. Um, and again, you know, a little bit on the lips is fine. We're going to come back and clean that up later, just trying to get it down into that, that crack where the mouth is, uh, that crevice, before we do all of the detailing work. And then do a little bit onto the cheeks. Um, not going to be quite as strong there, so I'm just going to try and thin this out a little bit on the palette. Um, and then just kind of drag down onto those cheeks here. I think this is it's just a sketch. I'm trying to get those shadows in there. And you know, you follow the, the light uh, on the figure, see how you know, hold it up to a to a lamp, see where the light goes. Um, you can kind of get a better idea of where your, your shadow should be. A little bit darker in the cheek here, uh, right on this edge. Get a bit on the side of the nose. And then in the ear. So, I mean, it doesn't look anything all that fantastic at the moment, but that's just, you know, it's just a sketch. I'm going to place them down. Um, you can also start to look at other details, what else you want to bring out. Um, let's get a bit of a, a smirk here. So there's kind of that line running down the side of the mouth. So I might give a bit of shadow onto that. Here, just kind of get around the eyes, outline them a little bit for later. All right, and other places you can do some some lighter shadows might be on the sides of the temples. Uh, you know, for the face, you almost want to think of it as more of a spotlight going right down onto the face, so that the front of the face is lit. And then it gets a bit darker 
uh, around to the, the sides. See, put a bit of shadow into there, uh, and I'll I'll make that much more subtle when I come back into blend. Uh, I'm trying to get the, uh, the base of the placement there. All right, so uh, that's more or less the starting point. Um, And we will go back in and clean that up a lot. Uh, but it just gives a general idea. It kind of helps us to find the shape. And the idea being, you know, as I go back and blend, I already sort of know where I'm working. I know where those shadows are, uh, where I want to be. Uh, when we go to the next step, we'll start to kind of, uh, again, we'll feather those out. Um, we'll, we'll blend those in. We'll make some shadows more subtle. Uh, I might maybe strengthen some. I might actually add some more down here underneath the chin. Um, you know, I can always just take a step back and see, you know, how does that look? How does that placement feel? Does it seem right? Um, but there you go. So uh, I'm going to take a pause here for a sec and set up for the next uh, next stage. But uh, there we are. Thank you so much. And please, please feel free to leave any questions, and I'm happy to uh, uh, answer anything you guys might have. Thank you so much.